Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate Enhanced Edition. I'm your host, Colors Fade, aka Christopher Holmes from the Friendly Gaming Network. This is episode six. We are on our way to rescue Dinahair for Minsk. And we're getting close to getting everyone the appropriate <laughs> level up. I, I, this game is so hard until everybody gets about two or three levels. One of the things I wanted to go through that I didn't really go through beforehand in um, some of the previous episodes to explain was old Dungeons and Dragons like this had a really weird system of how to do armor class and how to hit and so our character here, our main character, Kane, has a dexterity score of 8, which gives him a bonus for armor class. And if we check it out, you can see on Pieces of Armor, it'll tell you what the armor class is, and then it'll also tell you if you get, um, it'll usually tell you if you get a, a bonus, or maybe it doesn't, this is armor class 8. So I'm going to check something out here. Armor class, current, new would be 4. New would be 0. Current would be 4. That's interesting the way they did this. So, the, so in the old game it used to tell you <laughs> that this is the enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate and they do things a little differently. I think they're trying to make it simpler for people who've never played uh, Dungeons and Dragons before. But it used to tell you armor class and then it would tell you what your dex bonus would be applying it to it. So this is armor class 4 dexterity minus 4 with the splint mail. Armor class minus fires crushing missile piercing. So his current armor class is 0 and if I put that on his armor class is 4 and in general you want the lowest base armor class that you can get. This would be 3 it says and so the issue is, for instance, um, the point I'm trying to make here is that the higher you go up with quality of armor, like plate armor, the less your dexterity bonus actually counts toward your armor class. So, for instance, I think uh, plate armor, I think full plate armor, no dexterity bonus counts toward it. So if you have, uh, for instance, a character like I do who has a dexterity of 18, the 4 that's added because of the score, the plus 4 that's added, is not applicable wearing plate armor. Um, I don't get any dexterity bonus from wearing plate armor. So you kind of want to choose the best armor you can that goes with your dexterity bonus. Which is why, for instance, Minsk gets a plus 2, I believe, for a dexterity bonus because he's got a 15 dex. His armor class is 7. His dexterity is minus 1 because of the armor. Let's see what that says. His new would be 6. His current is 9. And then if we... that's This part is new over here. So they use it a red so you can see. If you put that armor on, it makes you worse. That's kind of neat that they do that. But the original game certainly didn't do that. So anyways, his armor class is 6, which is not good. His armor class is 4, which is still not good. And my armor class is 0, which is actually really good. And her armor class is 7, which is terrible. Her armor class is 6, which is pretty... It's okay. These bracers would help if I could get them identified. And then Branwen has an armor class of 1, which is great. And part of the reason she does is she's got a 16 dexterity. So she's getting a lot of dexterity bonus with this splint mail. Armor class 4. Interesting. So I wish it would tell you like the old school Baldur's Gate about the dexterity bonus, but it doesn't, so we're okay. What? We're okay. We're still going to get it figured out. Any, At any rate, we're on a new map. We're kind of in the center of the map, and the map goes around here. And where we really want to go to rescue Dinahair is uh, to the west, but... A waste of my talents. As is the case with these games, well, or as is the case with this game, what you really want to do is clear the map and get experience from all the various uh, encounters that might be on this map. 
So the first thing you kind of do, or at least the first thing I do, I shouldn't say you because who knows how everybody else plays this, but for me, I try to, to go along the edges of the map, and then here we go, we're going to get... Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes, Rusk! <laughs> why, why he says Rusk, I don't know. It. You look in the text, and it, it says, ah, but he always says Rusk, and I always thought it was the funniest no, thing that he could say. <laughs> You're a queer fellow. Brand one. Oh, she's right there. My blade will cut you down to size. What you want? Who do I have left? I got someone coming from a long distance away. Yep. Emily, shoot. There we go. Mince just popped go somebody. I ban. Go for the eyes, boo. Go for the eyes. Rusk! Oh, he's encumbered. That's why. That's why he's so slow. He's oh yeah, he's really encumbered. All right. <laughs> Insk. Oh, and I quick. took a I took a hit there. No sooner said than done. Let's talk. All right. So I need an ale. <laughs> that's his funniest line. I need an ale. Oh, Minsk inventory is full. I'm in a really bad spot here with all this inventory, and so one of the things I need to do is take all these two-handed swords, for instance, and. Uh, I need to equip everybody here with extra, put their extra weapons in the equipable spots so that they can carry more. Inventory management in Baldur's Gate. Um, <laughs> this is the way it, this is the way it is. is the first game of its kind and, and it was just a little primitive. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do. My character, let's see what I need to do. And part of the, part of the reason you also, that it's a good idea to put extra weapons in these spots was because um, the uh, the weapons would break because we have this whole iron shortage thing going on. So I'm going to pass some long swords off to my character because that's what he uses and get some in those slots. I have a bow and arrow, but I don't have any arrows for it because Imowen has got all the arrows right now. One thing you can do when you get everybody a bow and arrow and get everybody some arrows up here is as enemies start to come in you can fire off volleys and then when they get to melee range switch to melee and that's a generally a pretty good strategy to use in this game but I just don't have enough bows and arrows to go around yet so this is why I've been doing this. Um, we can improve Jahira here a little bit. We can give her a shield. If you do this a shield in her spot and give her a club, then that, Im let's see, she goes from a 7 to a 6, um, but she's better with this quarter staff because it's a plus 1 quarter staff. Or is it? Oh no, it's not. It just says simple quarter staff. I thought this was a magic one. I thought this was a, oh, I, it would be if I identified it. I haven't, I haven't identified it yet, so. I can see that her base stack was 19, and with the quarter staff, it's minus one. And same thing here. You don't get, you don't get the benefit of it. it see, it says 1d6 plus one there because it's magic. And she has a proficiency with the club, so she gets a plus two here on the damage. So she does better damage with the club, but she's going to eventually hit better with the magic item. But since it's not identified, I might as well just use the club. So that's what we'll do. And that'll give her one extra armor class. No sooner said than done. And I'm just I'm gonna stop picking up short swords. They're not worth it now. We're we're out of inventory space. Make it quick. And I'm gonna get healed. <laughs> Jahira has those funny lines. Why do we still trump about? Cause she's but anyways back to the whole map situation this is what I typically like to do is clear the outside edges of the map of any encounters there and then find the middle of the map and see if there are any interesting encounters or caves or anything generally they, the devs didn't put the developers didn't put encounters along the edges very often 
so you could clear this whole edge and then the interesting stuff was more toward the middle Cloud Peak Mountains well now I know what to name this episode and what time of day is it? it is day 8 hour 2 and that's why Jahira is like why are we still out here scroll back so it's a little easier to watch. What do we have up here? Dinah here is one more map space to the left than Knoll Fortress. And then what I've what I did a little bit of between last episode and this one was uh, a little bit of research on a couple of things. Oh, there's a dead cat. That's sad. I remember this, though. It's a dead cat, and there's someone up here who was looking for their dead cat. Oh, and there's a Zwart. What? I'll attack him. I don't want to. Right. Kagan will attack him. Will get I stuck it. Make it quick. Yes? A lone Zvart. You've a task as good as done. What? No sooner said than done. I think the resolution to the cat is up over here. But at any rate, um, one of the things I researched was when is the appropriate time to multiclass Imon if I'm going to multiclass her? And it appears to be level 4 or 5 where she can max out her thieving skills. And then, um, when I tried to multi-class, dual-class her last episode, you notice she lost all her ability to use her, her thieving um, stuff. Th the way dual-class worked in Advanced Dungeons and Dragons at the time is once you dual-class to your new class, you're prohibited from using your old class's skills until you reach, uh, until your new class exceeds the level of your old class. So if I dual class her when she's a thief at level 4, she has to become a level 5 mage before she gets access to her thief skills again. <laughs> Pixie, my cat, she was playing close to the waterfall and slipped. Sniff. I hope she's alright. No, she's not. Asked me to rescue her cat from the waterfall. I want my mommy. At least I can give her a proper funeral, though. <laughs> Here, this is the last of my allowance, but you can have it for finding Pixie. So, we find a cat in the middle of nowhere. And a little girl in the middle of nowhere. Quite the funny little... It, it really is like a super throwback to... Dungeon Dragons, it just had that feel of this is totally something that a Dungeon Master would throw at you. We can't transition there, you can't get off of there. And I don't think there's anywhere else we can go up here. There's no cliff, I mean there's no cave or anything in here. So, time to come back. Uh oh. Waterfall had a wolf. Oh, that was a rocking hit. Emma made that happen. <laughs> yeah, so isn't the little girl with the with the cat totally something that a dungeon master would be like? You're in the middle of the forest and you wander into a little girl. And she's looking for her cat. Somebody in the somebody in the game is saying, "Is she an ogre mage in disguise?" All right, so we've reached the western edge of the map, and now we can go north, clearing the fog of war in the middle of the night. Let's see what hour is it? Is it still, yeah, still hour two. Our party of adventurers is swift. P 
periodically a good idea to quick save this as we're clearing this map. The other thing I've been doing is, uh, between the last episode and this one, in my, my little bit of research that I've been trying to do is uh, figuring out what party configuration I wanted to use. Because I like to get an optimum party and then stick with that for the duration of the game. And usually my optimum party is me and Minsk and Imowen and Dinahair and Branwen and somebody else, usually Jahira. But there's a paladin later in the game who has the best stats of anybody. And, and you can actually get him right now if we wanted to. He's just north of the friendly arm in. His name is Ajantus and he's pretty Please, awesome. Kind spirits. A wondrous ancient oak is in peril. Please, kind spirits, I wonder at ancient oaks. It is about to be attacked by two who would defile the majesty of nature. They have avoided my charms and must be stopped before irreparable harm is done. Would you heed my plea? Only the basest villains, villains would take advantage of a gentle forest spirit. Lead on, and I will deal with them. The dryad of the cloud peaks. I thank you, for although they seem dim of wit, they still could do much damage this way. Yeah, they are just ahead. I implore you, do what must be done to make them leave. Okay. Dryad of the Cloud Peaks. I'm gonna have a word with this guy. Make it quick. A waste of my talents. Can I talk hey to there. you? Caldo. I'm Caldo. This is my brother Crumb. <laughs> this is my brother Crumb. I don't know who you are. But I'll not have you sneaking about behind us while we'll work. We think there's treasure in this tree. And if you want to get up front and help, do it. Otherwise, me and Crumb will do something, uh, well, something really nasty. Ain't that right, Crumb? <laughs> I'll not let, not let you harm a branch on this tree. You'll have to go through me first. First or last, we probably go through you sometime. Get him, Crumb. All right, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a typical bar fight, isn't it? Yes. Huh? All right. Go pester someone else. <laughs> I do like Kagan's responses. He's pretty Our funny, lunch. but <laughs> You're a queer he's fellow. evil, so he has to leave. Uh, I think by the time she gets Bless off, we're probably gonna be. This fight might be over, but we need to sleep and rest, so. I'm gonna cast Bless. Nature servant awaits. Good at dawn. Oh, somebody got rocked. That'd be me. All right. Everybody attack this guy except for Hello? Branwen. Heal me, please. Oh, and I made a level. Yay! So my character is gonna get to level two, which will really help with the old hit point situation. That's awesome. Okay, now. Yes, a waste of my talents. My tree is in such pain. Here's a potion that may help you on your journeys. Camaraderie, adventure, and steel on <laughs> The stuff of legend, right, Boo? Minsk has the best lines. That's why you never want him to. You bunch of chumps! <laughs> what the hell do you think you was doing? <laughs> He doesn't like it because he's evil, which is really funny. Our reputation is popular, 14. When we get to 18, uh, Kagan will leave the group. So. So we got a potion. I have to check and see what it is. We got a bunch of loot, too, which is awesome. Uh, a bunch of this heavier loot. What do I want to do with this stuff? These short swords are just not worth the effort to carry. They're not... Y you can't sell them for anything. So I think I would rather pick that stuff up. Oh, he dropped a magic girdle and a magic club. Wow. That's nice. And he dropped a potion. And for we got a potion over here. This is an antidote, which is great. And this is an antidote, which is great. Um, poison in this game is, is quite the problem. So you do want to have these antidotes around. And you want to keep them in your quick slot. 
but I don't think we have anything that's going to poison us anytime soon, so I'm just going to hang on to him. But our character made a level. So let's go handle that. Oh, next level. That's for Minsk. There we go. Me. Level up. I don't get any more proficiency slots, and I don't have any skills, so my level up result is that my that goes reduced by one to hit armor class zero. And additional hit points gains are 10, because we're playing on normal mode, so we get the maximum of our constitution, and my lore increased by one. Fabulous. All right. It's excellent. So now he's cool. not as squishy. Getting everybody out of level one is no kind of... Said than done. Kind of really important. Um, we're day three, day eight, hour three, and we're just gonna keep wandering around this map, trying to clear it. I need to get a good look over here. Oh yeah, we're gonna clear the rest of this and then swoop back up here. Uh oh, a dire wolf. Um, I need to, I need to rest. Yes, so, oh, omnipresent authority. Dire wolves are tough, so I'm gonna have her cast bless on me. Make it quick. I don't wanna talk. What you want? By temper. Branwen, get in here. Ooh. Rocked him a little bit. Hey, Branwen. You ran name? right past him. Oh, <laughs> and see, bless takes so long. Of course. Oh, there's a cave here. Hmm. Okay. I think it's a good idea to maybe rest here, but before we go in this cave, but I'm gonna go in first because we can quick save and quick load. All right. We have um, bless is currently active, so we might as well attack. It hasn't wore off yet. Another one of these little caves. And we got a big, huge magic halberd and a whole bunch of money. Oh, goodness. And we're back to having a having an issue with uh, storage space. Alright, so I'm going to move some of these bastard swords over to him. He's almost at max capacity. Oh! Jahir is a long ways away from being at max capacity, so she might as well carry some stuff. Now she's much closer. Alright. So I can grab these things. Boy, we really need someone who can identify. Hopefully that'll be done here. When we rescue her. Alright. Let's go clear the rest of the map. Maybe rest and then go get down here. The Cloud Peak Mountains. Oh, another one of these guys. It's just a regular wolf. No loot. Little bit of experience. Big huge knoll over here. Uh oh. Alright. What? This is what I should have saved Bless Go for. Someone else. You point, I Minsk. Yep. Hello. Brandon doesn't have any more spells left. Oh, she has command. Hmm. I'll save it. If Temple Swift. Rock their world. Make it quick. No sooner said than done. I don't think these halberds are worth much money yes. either, but if I have the space I'm gonna pick what? them up. A waste of my talents. Did he have any other loot? I usually drop a gem or something. There we go. I'm just gonna grab the gem. Make it quick. I'm running out of space. These guys. <laughs> Nor stop! 
You have trespassed on our territory. You shall not be allowed to leave until you have paid tribute. We demand fifty gold in tribute. Why shouldn't we just kill the whole lot of you, you hairy piles of hyena dung? You will die for that. Well, maybe, but I don't think so. I need an owl. We're yes? gonna find out. A waste of my talents. Talk more foot kicking for good. Mints can always go into frenzy if I need him to. As good as done. Cool. Full plate and fucking steel. You shoot. Branwen may actually need to to uh, command this time. It's probably a good idea that we saved her command. Tis a fine day to die. All right. Jahiro, attack that guy. You point, I punch. Hello. Yep, use your command. Make this guy go down. Rocked his world. Make it quick. When he's down like that, they're easier to attack. Go pester someone else. I need an L. Yes? Emlyn. You're a queer fellow. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yikes. Go for the ice. Go for the ice. And there we go. A waste of my talents. So the gnolls are all dead. Do you want to tell me it's this way? And we're reduced to just picking up the jewelry now because the, we just don't have any space for anything else. Oh, and she's full up with that. You've a task? Yes, I As do. You direct. All right, guys. Make it quick. I think resting is going to be in order real soon. We're almost out of spells. But I'm hopeful of course. that we can clear the rest of this map. Because there is a timer on Minsk's desire to rescue Dine Herit. This His quest is one of the few quests in the games where it just kind of becomes drop everything you're doing and go, go rescue the damsel in distress. He will leave you party if you don't handle it quickly enough. Although, the issue is I can't remember really what quickly enough amounts to. Oh, Zvarts. I'm more interested in clearing the fog of war. I don't want to talk. Why me? <laughs> it's still making me laugh. Yes, of course. I've typically never played with Kagan. I guess I should make a point here about Kagan's quest. Um, when you found, when we found Kagan in Baragost earlier, and he mentions that he needs to take care of some bandits, it is one of the quests that is broken in the game, even in the enhanced edition of Baldur's Gate. There's no way to finish the quest, and so the enhanced edition people have made it so the quest basically goes away out of your out of your quest journal. Um, it's not anywhere in here. Wretched fortress. If you go there, go to conquer. What fortress do you mean? The fortress to the west. I wish to roast the captive when the others would rather let her live within that cellar. Fools! And now, my brethren, make me an exile from my own clan. Hear me, I shall taste her flesh yet. Uh, hmm. A woman is being held captive in a small knoll fortress to the west. That would be Dinair. And we're going to go rescue her. But before we do that, well, maybe not before. Let's let's move the map and then rest. Yep, there it is. No stronghold traveling 24 hours. So what I want to do now is definitely rest, but I want to make sure I use all of my healing spells first. There we go. Minsk is healed. What? And we'll rest. You do not dream of 
But tonight the visions are vivid indeed. Long have you walked, but now you find yourself back amidst the stones of Candlekeep. Your former home looms before you, but the gate is closed and barred. Over the walls there is a candle in your old room, but as the light goes out, the brick surrounding the window closes together. The very walls conspire to keep you at bay. A familiar voice startles you. Though it is calm and caring, you cannot go back this way, child. You must go on. Gorion forms before you. And though his image should be comforting, it seems but a shade of his living self. He is dead in your dreams, as in life. The phantom of your foster father gestures toward the blackness of the wood, as though it should be inviting. Perhaps it is, in a way, but the traveling will be hard. As you think this, a smooth and obvious path becomes clear out of the corner of your eye. It seems meant for you, pulls at your very being, and promises to quickly lead you away from the life you once led. Perhaps this would be for the best, but it is a bit too convenient for your liking. You do not wish to dwell upon the loss you have endured, but neither should it be forgotten. Gorion smiles and fades away. The pull becomes a push, but you turn away, steadfast in your new direction. The way is not quite as clear, but it is sure to be interesting nonetheless. A whisper follows as you stride away. Something vestigial and sinister that you recognize, but yet have never heard. You will learn. You don't look back. Well, that seems like an appropriate place to end this episode. So we'll do that. The Cloud Peak Mountains are behind us, and the Null Fortress lies ahead of us. So on the next episode of Let's Play, we'll rescue Dinah here. Thank you for watching.